We open on a raven flying into Winterfell. Brano has functional legs and follows the raven. The dickhead appears to be a fucking mutant. Brano wakes up. Fionn says Bran needs to get out of bed and come do some bloody activities. Hordor gives him a fucking hoist. Tyrion is visiting Winterfell on his way home and he gives Bran a present. It's a plan to help him build the latest technology so he can ride a horse again. He's pretty fucking chuffed about that. Tyrion then trash talks Theon about being a Greyjoy. Samwell Tarly rocks up to the Night's Watch and unfortunately he's a big pussy. But Jono being a top bloke decides to befriend the cunt anyway. Carl Drogo is riding his horse. Viserys keeps acting like a dickhead and it's really awkward. Jorah talks about how he used to sell slaves and got kicked out of Westeros. Danny judges his principles. The series gets some hot tub action but acts like a dickhead, it's really awkward. Sansa goes to check on the Iron Throne and learns more about marriage and kids and being a lady and shit. She's still hell mad at her dad for killing her wolf, but this old Sheila says, well, you know, you gotta get over it. Meanwhile, Ned is still angry about being in King's Landing and surrounded by politics. I don't blame him, everyone in Parliament is fucking crazy. He finds out the bloke who died doing the job he's now doing was interested in a book. Maester Pycelle lets him hire out the book, even though he doesn't have a library card. It's basically the equivalent of Ancestry.com. Cut to the Karate Kid. Ned tries to say positive things about being a woman, but Arya's like, nah, that sounds boring as fuck, and gets back to doing her karate. Ned is like, alright, well if that's what you want to fucking do with your life. Sam tells Jono about how his dad is an asshole and sent him to the watch because he doesn't love him. They manage to make a joke out of it because the pain is so big he can't cope. Classic blokes. Littlefinger tells Ned some other things John Aaron did besides read big books before he died. This leads Ned to a young fella called Gendry, who gets asked who his dad is all the time, but he doesn't have a fucking clue. Ned is like, I'll be damned if that isn't a bastard of King Robbo. Jono tells Gren and Pip that even though Sam is a big pussy, bullying people is not good. He gets laughed at, but gives the dickhead a death stare. Later on, Ghost makes the bully shit his undies. The next day, everyone makes Sam look awesome at fighting. It pisses Alice of Thorn off fucking to the max. Meanwhile, the Targaryens have another bloody domestic. Danny ends up winning this one and gives Viserys a spray about how much of a soft cock he is. Jono and Sambo have a deep and meaningful about how they're both virgins. With one of them being a bastard and the other a general reject, they're a bit low on confidence. But yeah, nah, top blokes usually get their end wet eventually. Back over the narrow sea and Danny is feeling bad about beating up her brother. Jorah is like, fuck the cunt, and by the way, you'd be a better ruler. King Robbo is throwing a party for Ned, but everyone is bored as fuck. Littlefinger starts grooming Sansa, this wanker gets a piece of wood in his neck, and we learn about how the mountain burnt his brother's face. Finally, Cersei threatens Ned because he's been looking at Ancestry.com, and Catelyn has Tyrion arrested because she fully reckons he tried to kill Bran. It's a hard knock life for the little fella. End. You're such a beautiful freak. Well, yeah, now fuck yeah, another season one episode that was jam packed with lots of character and plot awesomeness. My love is always in theme though, and what the fuck something is about. So let's cut the bullshit and get to the juicy core. The episode is called Cripples, Bastards, and Broken Things. Tyrion even says the name of the title, which carries a lot of the episode's meaning and heartline. Cripples, Bastards, and Broken Things were all heavily featured in the episode, and although their stories are tragic, they may go on to become some of the strongest wankers in Westeros. For me, that's really what this episode is about, learning the weakest parts of the potentially strongest characters, the legends that will go from zero to hero. Bran is a cripple, and although he's depressed as fuck, Tyrion is keen to help him regain some strength with the present he gives the young lad. Tyrion relates to the boy and how he may be seen as weak. We also get a hint into Bran's potential 
special magical abilities as he dreams of a three-eyed raven in the opening scene. He's gonna get involved in some majestic shit and that's likely to make him way more than a helpless, despondent cripple. Jono of course is a featured bastard and we learn more about his struggle with his low self-esteem through the story he tells Sambo. He was too scared to have sex with a Sheila for the first time because he was worried that he'd end up making another bastard with her and he says that a bastard's life is not pleasant whatsoever. That's some sad shit Jono. Samuel Tarly is not a cripple or a bastard but he sure as hell is a broken thing. His father gave him the choice between taking the black at the Night's Watch or being killed. Such a callous cold father is bound to leave you broken. However if he gets over his cowardice he may become a strong bloke in future. Jumping back to bastards, a new one was introduced entirely called Gendry. Talking about his relatively unknown parents is a sore spot. Ned is convinced though that this fella is a bastard of King Robbo, so Gendry may become one hell of a powerful Baratheon in future once he realises his bloodline. Other characters featured in this episode that fall under the label of broken things would be Theon Greyjoy, kidnapped by Ned Stark as a prisoner after the fight between the Starks and the Greyjoys there, Sandor the Hound Clegane, who Littlefinger says was broken by his own brother Gregor the Mountain Clegane, and Daenerys Targaryen, who is already starting to shift out of her brokenness and realise her power. Viserys is truly the broken one, but it doesn't look like he can overcome that shit. He's blood He's stubborn in wanting to remain jaded. The episode really sets up characters that may be considered weak but will grow to be powerful as fuck. Outside of that theme, my favourite scenes were the Ned and Arya ones. Sean Bean and Macy Williams just have a shit hot chemistry and believability on screen. The Night's Watch stuff and the introduction to the hopeless Samwell was all really solid and I actually love the little scene between Jamie Lannister and Jory Cassell. Anytime Jamie Jamie gets to reminisce on fighting days long gone, it's quiet fun. Purely because he's so grumpy in his current job I guess, hearing him perk up and talk about battle is, is cool shit. You could say he's become somewhat of a broken thing, having to be secretive in his love for his sister and caught between her and Robbo's relationship. Bloody fucked up. Anyway, this episode really fleshed out some of the finest main characters plus managed to give some great moments to the lesser known characters as well. It was a bloody ripper. Beautiful.